you can see how we've been in here working around. All right. So here's the first one. Somehow he's walking through here. And there's another one right there. And then there's another one right here. You can see uh, way down. There's another one there, and then the other one was back there. So it went doom, doom, boom. And then there's trail. Here is the original image of the suspect Sasquatch Harley was able to take before the creature went back into the cover and made its way up over the ridge. Harley zoomed in with his phone and estimated it was over 100 yards away. I will zoom in 200% and run the image through several filters to see if we can bring out any additional features. A lot of animals are black because it's a great color for camouflage. Black absorbs light and helps the animal to melt into the background, making our eyes and minds think it's just the shadows of the environment. I will now zoom in 350% and run this image through the same filters. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a shimmer surrounding the Bigfoot shaped creature in the image that may be light shimmering through its outer layer of hair. Take a look at the right side of the head region. It appears to be the profile of the front of its face and nose. Amazing photo several hours before some eerie unexplained Sasquatch like vocalizations just after dark. RMSO responds, Hi Harley, I could hear creaking or machinery during parts of the audio. What was causing that? Harley continues, When I heard the vocalizations, I was sitting at the truck, logging everything that people had bought and picked up from the auction for the week and made sure that nobody was coming in there after dark before I went to my hotel. Um, that was the wind blowing on the side of the building. It's an old sawmill. 
I will say this. I went out to dinner up there and I talked to some old timers. I mentioned what I had been experiencing and told them what was going on. They were quiet for a minute. Then they referred to them as devil monkeys. Also, the owner of the sawmill told me a week prior, we've got bears, snakes, and coyotes, but there is far worse things than that in these mountains. RMSO exclaims, wow, devil monkeys? That sounds sinister. Has anyone else at that worksite or location had any experiences or sightings that you know of? Harley responds, nobody else that I'm aware of, just me. I know that it's engraved in my head. That's something you just don't hear. Here's a 3D map of the location. RMSO asks, Okay, your initial daytime encounter when you went to get a drink from your truck. Was this near the sawmill and auction area too? Were you ever able to estimate the height and width of the creature? Harley continues, Yes, it was outside of the sawmill. We sold logging equipment, loaders, saws, all the things inside the mill, and lumber. I'm six foot six, and it was bigger than me easily. I'm about 160 pounds and it could have snapped me like a twig. I stayed to take stuff out for people to get it loaded on their trailers. That gate was the only way in and out of the place that I'm aware of. I luck up the gate after the auction days and unlock it at sunrise the next day. RMSO responds, In this photo, was the elevated walkway from the top of the sawmill? Harley answers, It was from a crane. You can see it to the left of that circle. RMSO responds, how far were the tracks from the sawmill that you photographed and filmed? What were you thinking when you found the tracks two days before seeing the creature and hearing the vocalizations? What did you think made them? Harley continues, The tracks were about 50 to 100 yards from the sawmill. You can see towards the end of the video where the sawmill is. My initial thought was that's odd. Who would be walking around barefoot? Then I put my foot beside the track and... And it dwarfed mine, and I wear a size 12, and I was just wondering about that. I had always heard the stories about Bigfoot and the tracks, and that opened my mind to the reality of them being real. Having that first-hand encounter has made me a firm believer. RMSO continues, It's actually pretty creepy. You hear it growl up there at you, and you saw it moving around up there too. Harley responds, Yeah, that's what made me look. If I had not heard it growl, I would have never noticed it at all. It was a pretty good picture. When I heard the first growl, I looked and seen it through the brush, and it growled again. That's when I seen it leaning out and went back behind the brush. Then it turned around and walked back the way it came and walked up the ridge. It was bipedal, no doubt. It was walking kind of hunched over. Let me tell you, it's a genuine photo, and there is something in the photo. It's Rocky Mountain Sasquatch. With the Bigfoot evidence report that came from Virginia, the events of this amazing Bigfoot sighting and encounter happened on the southwest side of Virginia, near the Kentucky border. The witness went over what seemed like the most exciting events first, and so I would like to give you the timeline of events. On Monday in September, Harley records some unusual tracks over 50 yards from the sawmill. Two days later, he sees a Bigfoot-like creature watching him from the cliffs behind the sawmill. Then that evening, after dark, he records some strange Sasquatch-like vocalizations. I'm from Tennessee, but this encounter happened in Virginia. I don't know if you all cover other regions or not, but was hoping I could share my story and encourage others out there to share. I'm one to admit I was skeptic at first, but now that I had my first-hand encounter, isn't anyone going to tell me otherwise that it was a bear? I was working up there for two weeks. This is the location where it happened. This happened three years ago, September 23rd, 2020, around 1.45 in the afternoon. The entire encounter lasted over five minutes, and let me tell you, it felt like it lasted forever. I stepped away from the sawmill and went to the service truck to get a Coca-Cola out of my cooler. I was taking a break. I was by myself that week, but the week prior I wasn't alone. I had two more guys with me. I started to open my drink and I heard something making a growling sound. It sounded off in the wood line, right by me. I looked around the woods, nothing. I heard it again, and up on the cliff peeking out of the brush from behind a tree, there it was. When I would look, it would hide. Luckily, I got a picture. I don't know how to explain it, but the phone I had then just died, and to this day that phone is still messed up and not working properly. I don't know what it is or how to explain it because it's out of place. Now my first initial thought was a bear because of the color, but the way it acted and moved 
was not a bear. I grew up in Tennessee and we have bears. I saw around a dozen black bears down at the dumps near my house all at the same time. When this creature started peeking around the brush and trees, it was curious looking intelligent. It wasn't like any wildlife that I've ever been around. The vocalization started that evening about an hour after dark. It was probably around 9.30 p.m. When I stopped recording, there was a wood knock response from the holler below the vocalizations. The creature was about 100 yards away and the smell was like rotting eggs. I do remember the smell and everything that day. It haunts me. I need closure. I have dedicated my life now to try and put effort into the Bigfoot phenomenon and maybe help others open their mind to share their own encounters. Harley sat his phone down on the compressor of his truck while recording the vocalization event. Here are the vocalizations recorded the night after seeing the creature on the cliffs. Thank mm-hmm. you. 